Hey guys, Homogeneo here. Welcome back to another custom keyboard video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Drop Alt Mechanical Keyboard. So this is a fairly popular keyboard that has been in the scene for quite a while. And from what I can tell, the reception to this keyboard has been kind of mixed. There are a lot of people who really like the keyboard and are satisfied with what the Drop Alt offered. And you also have the others who have purchased it and feel like it was extremely overpriced. So for context, the Bare Bones Kit is 190 US dollars, which does put it pretty high up there in terms of price compared to other keyboards. But with that said, I wanted to take a look at it for myself and share my thoughts on the keyboard. So the drop bolt comes in a pretty standard cardboard box, nothing really special here. Inside the box is of course the drop alt itself. This is the high profile version and honestly, first impressions, it looks pretty good. It's also pretty heavy, which gives it this nice premium feel, but let's quickly talk about the accessories. So the drop bolt also includes a keycap puller, a switch puller and a USB-C cable. The switch puller is pretty disappointing. I don't really like these ones as they're hard to use and end up making my fingers really sore, I wish they included something like this instead. It's just a lot more ergonomic and way easier to use. The USB-C cable is also just average. It's a non-braided cable and honestly doesn't feel great in the hands. I would have loved to see something a little bit more premium again. And lastly, we have the keycap puller. And this one's honestly pretty nice. It's probably one of my favorite keycap pullers I've ever received with a keyboard. If you unscrew it, it also becomes a screwdriver which fits perfectly for the drop alt. So overall, the accessories are not bad could be a lot better and again for the price I really would have liked to see a little bit more premium stuff. I also purchased a drop alt soft carry case and it's honestly really nice. The drop alt fits the bag really nicely and the build quality is pretty good. It's definitely not the most robust case and it's not something I'd use to carry around in public but it's a really nice bag to sort of keep the keyboard dust free and store it away safely. Alright so the drop alt itself is extremely sleek and minimal. The case is made of this very smooth matte black aluminum which gives it the stealthy appearance. The edges of the case are also very rounded with some fairly minimal bezels. Definitely one of the more rounded keyboard cases on the market. And you probably also notice the gap next to the arrow keys. Now, this design can be a bit of a turnoff to some people. It really just comes down to preference. I personally don't really mind it and I honestly think it's fine, but if you don't like a wedge in the middle of your keyboard, I can totally understand as well. So on the back of the case, you'll see drop alt printed in pretty large white font along with some notes about manufacturing. And you also have five rubber feet, which are actually pretty good and help to reduce any movement. Along the side of the keyboard, you also have a layer of translucent acrylic for some RGB backlighting. It's really similar to the KBD75 V2 design, but the drop alt has a much thicker layer of acrylic, which makes the RGB a little brighter and more prominent. So the drop alt is made up of four main layers, the bottom housing, the top housing with an integrated plate, a PCB, and the acrylic layer. This is what we call an integrated plate design and in the custom community is not something we can really recommend. Because the plate is a part of the top frame and not a separate part, the keyboard will sound extremely hollow and will feel tremendously stiff. And to make things worse, the drop alt top frame is just inherently extremely stiff and basically has no flex at all, meaning that the typing experience will be much stiffer compared to other keyboards. The lack of keyboard flex may or may not be a downside to some and it does ultimately come down to preference but the hollowness that comes as a result of the integrated plate is definitely a huge downside. The drop alt comes with a hot swap PCB with a three pin switch configuration. This basically means that any switch you purchase that has five pins on the bottom will not be usable on this PCB. The only way to use the switches is if you cut off the two extra pins on the bottom. I personally am not a fan of permanently altering my switches so this is definitely another big downside for me and it's something I wish to drop would change about their PCB. The drop alt PCB also uses a north facing switch configuration which can cause clearance issues with cherry profile keycaps. The one and only real advantage of north facing switches is brighter RGB as the LED will be on the top where the legends of the keycaps are located. The RGB on this keyboard is pretty impressive. The PCB has both individual switch lighting as well as backlight capabilities which does make it pretty nice to look at. And this is mainly a preference thing but RGB really isn't important to me at all so if I had to pick between brighter RGB or no interference, I definitely would have given up brighter RGB instantly. 
One cool thing I do like about the design of this keyboard is the two USB-C ports. I don't think I've seen many keyboards with this kind of feature and honestly, I just really like it. It just makes it a lot easier to route a custom cable however you like without having to flip it over or move it around. It just makes cable management a little more convenient and it's honestly just a nice little feature. Okay, so let's move on to the stabilizers. These are Drop's own plate mounted stabilizers and they have a pretty bad reputation when it comes to stabs. They can never seem to get it right and as much as I want it to be nice, yeah. The drop all stabilizers without any modifications sound absolutely terrible. Not only is there a lot of rattle and pinging, the hollowness of the case makes it sound even worse. So before we do anything else, I want to start fixing the stabilizers. So there are two main ways that we can do this. The first option is to purchase cherry plate mounted stabilizers, which are a lot more reliable and sound way better. But for the purpose of this review, I'm going to instead modify the drop all stabilizers themselves. So you want to start off by removing the stabilizers by pressing down on the clip and pulling them out. I don't know if it was just terrible technique on my end, but I actually had a lot of trouble removing the stabilizers and I had to put a lot of pressure, which ended up making my hands hurt quite a bit. <laughs> After taking all of them out, start disassembling them but leave one for reference. And after that, we have to start clipping the stabilizers. You can use scissors for this, but I prefer using nippers. They're pretty cheap on Amazon, so I recommend getting one for yourself. So you want to cut off these two legs and then cut off any uneven material left on the bottom and it should look like this. Repeat this for each and every stabilizer stem and once that's done, we can move on to lubing. For stabilizers, I like to use Crytox 205G0. It's a pretty thick lube and does a great job of reducing rattle without making it feel too mushy. So I like to lube all the stabilizer housings first and then I move on to the stems and then I put them all back together. For the stabilizer wires, I'm going to add a generous amount of Crytox on each of the ends of the wires and then clip them back into the stabilizer housing. Once they're clipped in, you should also lube the part where the wire clips into the housing to make it even smoother. And the last thing we have to do is add some tape on the plate. Plate mounted stabilizers have a small issue where some of the stabs can wobble in place due to tightness issues. So to solve that, we are going to add small pieces of tape that go on the plate to reduce that wobble. It's a pretty small and simple step, but definitely makes a huge difference in how the stabilizers sound and feel. It can take a bit of trial and error, so you just have to kind of take your time with this and keep trying. If the stabilizers don't go back in properly or still wobble, take another look at the tape and try again. Alright, so the keyboard still sounds really hollow, and to reduce this, I'm going to be adding some foam. There are a lot of options when it comes to foam, but I'm just going to stick to normal packing foam. So I just roughly cut out the packing foam in the shape of the gaps below the PCB and placed it inside. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you definitely want to cover as much space as possible. Now we can start adding all of our switches. I'm going to be using Drop Holy Pandas to make this 100% drop build. These are lubed with Crytox 203G0 and filmed with Desk Keys switch films. And the best part is that they come with only three pins, meaning that I don't need to modify them to use for the build. And now for the keycaps. I'm going to be using the Black Drop Skylight keycaps. These are PPT shine through keycaps and they are pretty nice. They're definitely not GMK level quality and that is reflected in the price, but they do fit really nicely with the minimal matte black aesthetic of the Drop Alt. And if you're a fan of RGB, the shine through keycaps do a great job of accentuating the lighting this keyboard has to offer. And with all of that said, let's move on to the sound test. Not, not. Not, not. Subscribe to Homogeneo.
Okay, so would I recommend getting the Drop Alt? Honestly, no, not really. The Drop Alt does have some redeeming features, like it looks great, it's built really well, and by all means, it is still a good keyboard. So if you, for some reason, really like it and still wanna get it, then I'm not gonna stop you. It works. It's just, I don't think it's really worth $200, especially when you consider the fact that there are a lot more keyboards coming out. And I think that the Drop Alt is just sort of like an outdated design that really needs to be reworked. The Drop Alt's overall design from the integrated plate to the awkward three pin PCB to the really sh stabilizers. And if you wanna program your Drop Alt, well, have fun. You're gonna to have to use QMK and not VIA, a much more user-friendly software. So. I just feel like the drop alt is slowly losing its ground and it's just not something I can really recommend anymore. If I made a review on this a year ago, then yeah, sure, <laughs> go for it. But right now there are just a lot of better alternatives that are cheaper, like the NK65 Entry Edition, the Rama Works Kara, and then you can also go, you know, around the similar price range like the Ida Bao ID80, and then you can also go more expensive and that's sort of bring you more into the custom range. But right now, and in the future, unless Drop makes some updates to this, the Drop Alt doesn't make sense to me. It's not something I could recommend to you. It's not something that I would say is worth your money. So yeah, Drop is gonna have to make some big moves if they wanna keep up with all the other keyboard manufacturers coming around. Because honestly, as of right now, the Drop Alt is not viable. It's not meta, it's, it's pretty papega. <laughs> I also want to quickly announce that my Discord server is now officially partnered. If you have burning questions about keyboards or you want to chat with me or chat with other keyboard people, then feel free to join. It is an awesome community and I'm pretty active there. Kinda. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.